I'm Dr. Harlan Pollock, and you're watching the Plastic Surgery Channel. Lasers are doing it all, erasing wrinkles, removing red spots, eliminating hair, and even smoothing acne scars left over from your awkward teen years. Stay tuned for a look at how lasers can solve your beauty dilemmas. A beam of light suddenly makes you have younger, smoother, more perfect skin. Sounds like something out of a science fiction movie. I am Deanne Moore. I'm here with the Plastic Surgery Channel, and we are here playing laser tag. And today, I am so going to get Dr. Adams. You better watch it, because here I come. 1957, dawn of the laser age. Two researchers at Bell Labs, Charles Hard Townis and Arthur Leonard Shallow, conceived the basic idea behind the laser. First of all, I um, never talk about lasers without my laser hat. So. 1959, Gordon Gould, a graduate student at Columbia University, introduces the term laser to the world in a conference paper. Uh, one thing it can do is kill you. That's what I'm gonna no! do. <laughs> 1960, the first working laser is made by Theodore H. Maiman at Hughes Research Laboratories, and the laser age is born. Laser, when most people hear the word, they think of DVDs, Blu-ray players, the spot welding machine down at the factory, or maybe a scene from a sci-fi movie. Go ahead, doctor, I'll cover you if there's trouble. <laughs> The word laser is an acronym, light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. It's a kind of light amplifier in which a clever trick of physics is used to boost the intensity of an ordinary source of light by millions of times. The resulting thin beam is coherent, meaning all one wavelength, and focusing all that light energy into a tiny beam gives laser lots of power. Oh yeah, don't point them at your eye. That's right. You can put your eye out. In 1962, dermatologist Leon Goldman used a laser to remove an unwanted tattoo, the first use of lasers in medical history. In the early 1980s, the first tunable dye laser was developed, enabling cosmetic surgeons to remove unwanted skin markings without affecting the surrounding tissue. And today, new types of lasers such as the Erbium YAG laser, the powerful carbon dioxide laser, and the new fractionated laser are used to flatten wrinkles, bleach away unwanted pigmentation, and heal scars caused by acne. Yes, the age of the laser is truly an age of wonder. Under its benign light, Americans of all creeds and colors can march confidently into the future, free from fear and from unsightly facial damage. Now this should help you to know everything you should possibly need to know about lasers. And of course, yeah, I would. Welcome to Plastic Surgery Talk. I'm Dr. Bill Adams, and we have a fascinating show for you today. I'm here in the studio with Dr. Jason Posner, who is medical director for the Sanctuary Medical Aesthetic Center in Boca Raton, Florida, and is an expert in laser technology. Jason, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you, Bill. It's wonderful to be here. So we're going to talk about lasers today. I've always been confused about this, and I, I want to clarify this for our, our patient audience. What exactly is a laser? And you hear about CO2 laser and the Erbium. We're going to talk about hair removal lasers la later. What what is it? Well, basically, a laser is a device that emits a certain wavelength or type of light. They all have an energy source, and they all have either an arm or a beam coming off of it. And the different laser light that comes off is attracted to different things in the skin. It might be blood vessels, it might be water, it might be a hair follicle. And with that, we actually do things like get rid of those blood vessels, or get rid of unwanted hair, or resurface skin. So like a laser pointer, that's a laser but can it hurt somebody if I shine it on you? I don't know, maybe if you put it in my eye directly it might, but other than that, it's a pretty harmless device. Okay. Now, lasers have come a long way in the past 50 years. Where are we with lasers and plastic surgery? Well, there's a lot of lasers out there for use in plastic surgery. I mean, we use them for things like hair removal, we use them for vein removal, we use them for laser skin resurfacing or taking off wrinkles, we use them for tattoo removal. So there's a lot of new devices. We even are starting to use them for fat removal now. Yeah, and, and actually we're going to touch on most of those today because I think it's a, 
uh, fascinating, but a quickly evolving area. You always think of lasers as the only thing that, that evolves quicker than computers. So if you don't have the newest thing this week, it seems like next week there's another new thing out there. Absolutely. You have to be careful because some of the devices that are out might not necessarily be better than devices that were out a few years ago. So I want to ask you a question about this new technology called fractional laser therapy. What is a, what's a fractional laser? Well, with this, we need to go back to the history of skin resurfacing. You know, in the beginning, we used carbon dioxide or erbium lasers, which were used in their full field or 100% mode, which meant that they took off the top layer of skin, sort of from the top down, and it, they were pretty aggressive. And you had pretty long downtimes with these devices. The results were great, but some of the patients were red for up to a year, and it took weeks and weeks and weeks for their skin to heal. And for some patients, that just wasn't acceptable. So when fractional lasers came out, fractional lasers treat a fraction of the skin at any one time. That might be 10%, it might be up to 60 or 70%. And with that, the healing times are diminished, but the results are still pretty good. I'm actually starting to understand this now, so that's, that's great, that's very helpful. Um, we sent Dean Moore out to Somatique Medical, which is here in Dallas, and is actually the first medical spa of its kind in the nation. But we went there to learn more about lasers, so let's take a look. Hi, I'm Deanne Moore with the Plastic Surgery Channel, and I am here with Beverly Brashears, and she is a licensed paramedical clinical esthetician, and we're here to talk about the Fraxel technology and how it is absolutely revolutionizing the industry. So tell me about this Fraxel contraption. It is a skin resurfacing device, and it is an elective procedure. It's for beauty, it does enhance our appearance, and we're seeing more and more people elect to have this type of treatment, especially people that are in the working world and older, baby boomers, that want to look better, more refreshed. Their skin is much more vibrant and pretty. So this works for scars, for wrinkles, for your skin, sun everything, damage. sun damage. Sun damaged tissue. Typically, we're treating with Fraxel scars so that we can make them look less obvious. Uh, sun damaged skin, lots of freckling, melasma where we have clumping of melanocytes or where you get a masking or a, a dark area on the face and it's not even, fine lines and wrinkles and lip, fine lines around the lips. So what exactly does this Fraxel do? Can you explain it, how it works? How is it different from the other technology? That's a good question, and laser, if it's a true laser, has a very specific target. The target here is water, and we're targeting the deeper level of skin, and once it reaches its target, it actually causes, creates a wound in the skin as we scan over. It will create those little tiny, tiny, tiny pinholes of damage to the skin every time we roll the laser over the skin back and forth so that it's creating that controlled, what we call a controlled wound. And then the body automatically starts to heal. You'll start to, I start to see the, the skin changing in color and the bronzing of the skin starting. We start to even see a little swelling in the skin before the treatment's even finished. How do you know, you've mentioned a couple of times choosing the right candidate. How would you know if you are a candidate or what do you look for in someone to be a candidate for this? Basically, can I do it? I think that's a wonderful question, and I wish more people would ask. What we look for in patients is a patient, number one, that has a realistic expectation, a patient that's going to be compliant with what, with what we've asked them to do because this is a medical procedure. It's not a beauty treatment. The person behind the machine needs to know what they're doing. Others have taught a lot of what we consider knobology rather than the true mechanism and how it interacts with the skin and the physiology of the skin so they know how to turn it on but they really don't know what's happening within the skin when they're working and that's more important than what that machine is putting out you need to be reading the skin thank you so much beverly brashears we're here at somatique thank you so much for joining us back to you guys in the studio